Good morning. Well, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. It is so good to see all of you here today. A very special welcome to any guests and visitors that we have with us this morning, and certainly a, a welcome as well to any who are joining us remotely, maybe watching the live stream. We're so glad that you are able to worship with us uh, today as well. And welcome back, I should say, to those who were away last week on spring break as well. That includes me as well. So it's good to be back, good to be able to worship together here at Grafscup Church with God's people too. It's a special day today, as you have seen already, I trust from your bulletin covers. <clears throat> Excuse me, it is Gems Sunday, and we are very excited about that. Gems, of course, being our girls' uh, group here at Grafscup Church. And I know some of you uh, may be visiting with us today just because of that, because you have a girl that's uh, participating in GEMS as well, and we are so glad that you're here. And we're very, uh, very uh, interested to hear what our GEMS have been up to this year, and we'll hear more about that in just a little while. Well, as we enter into our time of worship today, I'd like to uh, share with you just the first uh, few verses of Psalm 95, where the psalmist declares... O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let's make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. Friends, this is whom we have gathered to worship this morning, and this God the only true God wants to greet his people this morning. If you're able, would you please rise to receive that greeting today? Well, congregation, God greets us this morning, each and every one of us with these words, grace, mercy, and peace be to you. From God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. As God is greeting us, let us acknowledge him as who he is. Let's sing. Remember those walls that we call sin and shame. They were like raisins that we couldn't escape. But he came, and he died, and he rose, those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we call death and grave, they were like mountains that stood in a What he does, he saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, bent heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Remember, remember that fear that took our breath away. Face so weak that we could barely pray. Altars in the wilderness tell the story of his faithfulness. Never once did he fail, and he never will. This is our God, this is who he is. He loves us. This is our God, this is what he does. He saves us. He bore the cross. And heaven and earth proclaim This is our God, King Jesus Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, He did Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus Who pulled me out of that 
happened? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus. Who rescued him from that grave? Yahweh, Yahweh. Who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Jesus. Who rescued me from that grave? Yahweh, Yahweh. Who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Him. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what He does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim. the 
shadow belongs to you and every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night oh God the battle belongs to you and oh God the battle belongs to you Pray with me this morning. Lord God, how good it is to come into your presence to worship you and to know that you are the only true God, that you are the great and awesome and loving God, the only one who is worthy of our worship, the only one who is worthy of our lives. God, we thank you that we know who you are, that, that you have made that clear. And that, God, you have touched us with your grace to know and to love and to trust Jesus and therefore to know you and you alone as our God. Lord, we pray that as we worship today that we might worship in spirit and in truth as you desire and most certainly as you deserve. And God, thanks for this special time that we could could hear from our gems and we could celebrate that ministry and focus on and the girls of our congregation too. May it be a wonderful blessing to us, and God, may this worship time bring a blessing to you. We pray and ask this, as always, only in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are going to have the opportunity to uh, get a good sense of what our GEMS group has been up to uh, this year. We're going to hear from them in just a minute, but first, we're going to watch uh, a video. So go ahead and get that started.
Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Lydia Genzink, and I am one of the club coordinators for GEMS, along with Cassie. And this was our, our first year doing this, and it's been so great just getting to know all these girls. We've had a lot of fun this year. Um, we've had about 30, usually about 35 girls um, every Wednesday, or every other Wednesday. Um, so this is a few of them here. We're glad you girls made it. Um, I am, for those of you that aren't familiar with gyms, I'll just give you a little rundown of the night. Uh, we usually start with a large group meeting and then we sing together and have a large group lesson that Marge has led us with so graciously. And then we break off into our small groups and continue the lesson. And then we finish with uh, snacks and crafts and just hanging out and having some girl time. Um, we've also, this year, we had a couple badge nights. One of them was painting. We did like a cookie canvas night. And the other night was woodworking with John Kuman. And the girls were the quietest they've ever been that night, taking in all the woodworking details. So, um, and then we also had a daddy-daughter night and uh, we ended the year with an auction, which was a lot of fun. Um, this year, our focus was on Queen Esther. We learned that Queen Esther was more than an orphan, and she was more than a queen, and she was able to put her hope in the Lord, and because of that, she could rise up and help save her people. The girls learned that they are also more than, they're more than a student, more than an athlete, um, we just kind of had them fill in the blank of what they were more than, and we taught them that putting your hope in the Lord can help you be strong and confident and not have to worry about what will come. We have a few girls that would like to share some of their favorite things this year about Jim. So, Marina, you want to start? I like the Pinewood Derby. I enjoyed the crafts and the parties. Um, I especially enjoyed the woodworking badge with my dad, and all the leaders were so nice. My favorite part is the crafts and listening to stories. Uh, my favorite part was the auction at the end of the year. You got to bid on certain items with your points that you earned. My favorite part of GEMS this year was the, was the end of the year auction because I like bidding on all the stuff. She was a good bidder too. <laughs> One thing that we did with the auction is we worked on learning a verse and that earned them 50 extra points. So girls, are you ready to say that verse to everyone? Ready? more confident when it was just one-on-one. -on -one. Cassie, but all you girls, as you were up here, and those who shared, thank you for that. That, that along with that video, gives us a really good sense of uh, what GEMS is all about, what you do, and some of the things that you learned, some of the things that you talked about. It sounds like it was a, a pretty good year, right? Pretty good year. Congratulations. Well, I'm going to invite up at this time uh, the young children and worship kids for the blessing and dismissal. You guys uh, can meet me right here. The helpers can come forward too. Let's gather together right here. All right. Good, good, good. Good morning, good morning. 
Good morning. You're five. And you're almost five. All right. I'm, I'm way past five. I hate to tell you that. But yeah. All right. Let, let's do our blessing and dismissal. Let's look at all the moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas out here, okay? Congregation, what is your desire for the children? The Lord be with you as you worship and also with you. Thank you. There's Miss Olivia waiting for you there. Lydia and Cassie, you've got a lot of future gems in that little group there, too. Some future cadets as well, right? Good, good. Well, as we have the opportunity to go together in God uh, to prayer, just a couple of things, a couple of announcements generally before that. Uh, just to put a plug in for the women's event that's happening on April 25 that refresh and renew. Sign-ups have been happening for a few weeks now. If you haven't had a chance yet to sign up, Please do that today. As I understand it, today is the last day to sign up for that. So if you or if you have a neighbor or a friend or a coworker that you've invited, they're going to come, this is the time to sign up those names so that they know uh, exactly how many to plan for. Then also, of course, uh, in the Narthex, as you heard last week, there's the Vacation Bible School sign up there. Again, if you haven't had a chance yet to sign up to volunteer and to help with that this summer, it's coming in June, that's going to be here before we know it, uh, take an opportunity to sign up for that too. So those two very important things, refresh and renew and VBS signups, and then perhaps the most important thing, on April 28, we're having a dessert bar. So sign up to bring a dessert, all right? Mark that one down. Then also, just to let you know, uh, after the service today, we're going to be doing our voting for new council members. So at the close of the service today, following that last song, you're just going to be invited to sit back down. Everyone, doesn't matter if you're a member here or not, if you're just visiting with us here today, even if you're a non-voting member, just have a seat. And a couple of council members will come up and go through that process. It'll be real quick. Matt, five minutes or so, and then everybody will be dismissed and we'll go uh, enjoy that time of fellowship together in the narthex. So just telling you that now, just to, uh, uh, so it doesn't surprise us at the end of the service, but that's what's going to be happening today after the service is uh, completed. Then with respect uh, to prayer, a few things, a couple of things for us to uh, certainly be in, pr- uh, in terms of thinking of prayer and the things we already know about that's in the our announcement sheets and our Wednesday emails. Um, would you also please uh, be in prayer in a special way for the Scott and Shelley uh, Plagamars family? Uh, Scott's uh, father, Harvey, uh, somewhat unexpectedly passed away yesterday. So it's a bit of a shock uh, to the family and certainly a time of grief uh, and mourning for them. Uh, so just keep them uh, in your thoughts and prayers. And as we uh, learn more about arrangements and so forth, we'll make sure to pass that on to everyone as well. Then also, I, I don't know if this was mentioned last week, probably not, but just to alert our attention to it, as we're in a new month, we also have a new uh, missionary focus, a new monthly missionary. And for April, uh, that is David and Emily Romero. Uh, and their work at the Jubilee uh, Centers International there in Honduras. So make sure that that we're praying for the Romeros in a special way, certainly for all of our missionaries, but and also if you feel led, reach out to them with an email or uh, encourage them uh, in the work that God has set before them to do. So let's go to God in prayer together. Our great and awesome and loving God, the only true God, the everlasting God. How good it is to come before you in worship today, to praise and honor and to glorify you because you alone are worthy. And we are so thankful that you have revealed yourself to us, that you have called us to be yours, that we are the sheep of your pasture, that we are the flock under your care. And God, we continually stand amazed at your grace and your mercy And at the gift of your Son, 
that the salvation you have given to us by faith in Jesus out of nothing we have done or ever could do to deserve it. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness and for the ongoing presence of your Spirit leading us and guiding us, encouraging us and equipping us, reminding us day by day, even moment by moment, of who you are and whose we are. God, forgive us for the times when we forget and empower us more and more to live into your kingdom plans for us, both as individual believers and as the body of Christ here at Grasscup Church. Father God, we're so thankful for this church, for the fellowship that we enjoy, for programs like our GEMS ministry, and for the opportunity to celebrate that ministry in a special way today. We're thankful for all of our children and our young people, for, uh, for each and every one. And for our young adults as well, and for our families, for our older members, Lord, you have blessed us with a, a variety of ages and experiences. And, and Lord, we continue to pray that this church would be a bright and shining light in this community for you and for the gospel. Lord, would you be with those of this body who have need today? We continue to lift up before you folks like Ron Brooker and, and for Nick Unima too. We, we pray for all of our nursing home residents. Uh, we pray for loved ones connected to this congregation uh, who have need in their life. We continue to pray for Justin and for Hannah and for Casey. God, uh, would you please give to each one exactly what they stand in need of today. For others, Lord, uh, we pray too for those who are grieving today. We think in a special way of the Plagamars family and the sudden loss of Harvey. Lord, we pray for your peace and your comfort. We pray that you'd remind them of the faith that you had blessed Harvey with and for the victory that he is enjoying even now. But we pray beyond those who are grieving, also for those who are struggling, for those who are questioning. Would you be near to them? We pray in a special way for our neighborhood, for our community and for our state, and we certainly pray for our nation. We pray for all of our leaders. We, we pray for all of those who serve in our armed forces, and especially those from our own congregation who serve in the armed forces, that you protect them, God, that you would care for them. And we pray for our world, a world that seems to be overrun with danger and conflict, with poverty and with war. We hear today again of renewed concerns in Israel and the things that are happening in the Middle East. God, we pray that you would remind us to be faithful in prayer, confident in, in your perfect will. And Father, we pray in a special way. We, we think today of the missionaries that we have the privilege to support who are out in this world proclaiming the gospel, the truth of Jesus in a special way, we pray for David and Emily Romero and their family there in Honduras at Jubilee Centers International. God, would you bless them in the work that you have called them to do. We're thankful for the good things that have been happening there, and we continue to pray for their protection, and God, for the name of Jesus, to continue to go forth with power. Lord God, would you bless us now as we turn our attention to your holy word, would you open our, our minds? Would you open our ears? Would you open our hearts to what you have for us today, that you would speak to each one of us as we need to be spoken to, that we would go from this place even more confident of who you are and who you have called us to be. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name and in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to give ourselves to the Lord. So please stand and sing together. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endured through generations. I know that you will keep your
God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. You heard your children, and you hear your children now. You are the same God, you are the same God, you answer prayers back then, and you will answer now, you are the same God, you are the same God, you are providing that, you are providing now, you are the same God. You move in power, you move in power now. God move in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are a healer then. God will be healer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are the same.
Well, thank you for, uh, for that song. I love that song. I know it's a little bit newer to us as a congregation. We're still learning it a little bit. But what a message that that song declares. And especially as we look into our text for today and as we think about the, the gems the theme as well, keep that message uh, in mind as well. I invite you to take out your Bibles and turn there with me uh, to Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to be looking at a little bit of a chunk of it, verses 9 through 31 today. You're going to find that beginning on page 712 of your pew Bibles. Isaiah chapter 40, and when I say that chapter, many of us, uh, our ears probably perk up just a little bit. We're, we're familiar with some of this text, perhaps uh, the very beginning particularly. We, we listen to these verses a, a lot around Advent and Christmas time. Comfort, comfort, my people, says that you're God. That's the opening of chapter 40, and then it goes on to a, a few verses about the, the Word of God standing forever, right? That uh, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord is there forever. And then we get to this verse 9 through 31, and it's a chunk of Scripture that has this little heading above it in our Bibles, and I want us to notice that called the greatness of God. The greatness of God. So let's listen to verses 9 through 31. Go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, a herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up. Fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and His arm rules for Him. Behold, His reward is with Him, and His recompense before Him. He will tend His flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has measured the spirit of the Lord or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. Lebanon would not suffice for fuel, nor are its beasts enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him, and they are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. To, to whom then will you liken God, or what likeness compare with him? An idol? A craftsman casts it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold, and casts it for silver chains? He who is too impoverished for an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out a skilled craftsman to set up an idol that will not move. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is He who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness." Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of His might, and because He is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right hand is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall exhausted. 
But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So as far as we're going to read in God's Word this morning, and may He bless His Word to us today. Well, congregation, right off the bat uh, this morning, I want to tell you that I am a huge fan of the GEMS program. And uh, when I say that, I'm not only referring to the program right here at our church, but I do want to say that the program that we have here at Grass Cup Church is an awesome, awesome program, and that is due in great measure to a couple of ladies right there, Lydia and Cassie, and all of their volunteer leaders Uh, There is no doubt uh, that these ladies just pour their heart and soul into this ministry, and in particular, into these girls. And uh, I know that we we clapped after their their report, but can we just say thank you to these leaders again for everything that they do? We are really, really appreciative of that. And to hear that the group normally is about 35 girls, that's, uh, that's a handful for you guys, uh, all you leaders, uh, on uh, every other Wednesday night. But we're so grateful for all that you do. But getting back to my uh, original opening statement here, that I'm a big fan of the GEMS program in general. And I really do appreciate this program. Uh, most of you know I, I'm a girl dad, so I had three girls Uh, go through this program, not not here, of course, at this church, uh, but at my previous congregation. Uh, But be that as it may, I'm very, very grateful that our denomination offers uh, this program. I I think it's so very vital uh, with respect to the world we live in today and very specifically uh, the world that our girls are growing up in today. Uh, In fact, I I did a little research. I checked on the, the GEMS website And on one of the tabs, it has this tab that's entitled, Why Gems, right? Why even think about having a gems program? Why gems? And on that particular page, it says, and I'm quoting, it's not easy being a girl today. Social pressure isn't just at school or in the neighborhood. It's in their hands and at their fingertips 24-7. goes on to say that the list of issues that girls face today could span from A to Z, Anxiety, bullying, cutting, depression, eating disorders, all the way to Z, zits. So furthermore, this website points out, the current stats are alarming. It says global research conducted by the agency Dove tells us, girls as young as five are worried about their weight Young girls are more worried about becoming fat than they are of nuclear war, cancer, or losing their parents. Girls are three times more likely than boys to have a negative body image. In fact, it says a girl's self-esteem peaks at age nine and then takes a nosedive. And 70% of our girls feel they don't measure up. Now, this page goes on to say, those might be the stats, but at GEMS, we know the facts. Girls are accepted, belong, chosen daughters of the King. And ultimately, I think that's really what this GEMS program is all about. It's all about instilling God's truth into our girls today, as opposed to the the plethora of lies in society around them. And that's exactly why I say I'm a huge fan of the GEMS program, and I am so glad that we as a church are too, that we support this program fully, right? Not just with with our words, not just with our prayers, not just with maybe our finances as well, but that we are willing as a church to give over one entire morning worship service just like we do for our cadet program so that we can focus our attention on the GEMS, their year, their program, and I think that is just absolutely wonderful. 
Now, another great thing about the GEMS program, again, just like the cadet program, is the annual theme that the girls get to focus their attention on, that they get to think about. Now, this year's theme, as we've heard a little bit about it, and even as you've maybe checked out your, your bulletin covers, maybe read the back of it as well, but right on the front, this year's theme is plastered. It is Rise Up, and that's a theme that has been drawn particularly from the last verse of the text in Isaiah 40 that I shared earlier, verse 31, where it reads... But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And along with that, and I think really to kind of flesh this verse out, uh, the girls studied the story of Esther, right? And they discovered in Esther a young woman who really did rise up. Right, who in so many ways became so much more than what she was. In fact, she was able to soar as if on the wings of an eagle, even as unexpectedly as that may have happened to her. So many of us, I would imagine, are at least somewhat familiar with the story of Esther. I see a show of hands. That we, we recognize at least the name. Esther, yeah, okay. Many of us, we're, we're kind of vaguely familiar with the biblical story of Esther, but kind of just to refresh our memories, uh, maybe it's been a little while since we've heard that story, since we've read that story. I want to give you just kind of the, the Cliff Notes version here, okay? So Esther was a, a Jewish girl who became the queen of King Xerxes of Persia, after the previous queen, a woman by the name of Vashti, had greatly angered the king and was deposed. However, Esther hid her Jewish heritage as her uncle, a man by the name of Mordecai, had encouraged her to do, fearing that her Jewish heritage might be a hindrance to her and also to, to really the whole Jewish community that was there with her as well, away from Jerusalem at this time. Now Mordecai, going back to Mordecai, he was a good man. Uh, even to the point, again, he's a Jew, he's living in a foreign land, even to the point that when he heard of a conspiracy against King Xerxes, he went ahead and told Queen Esther and basically saved the king. But even so, there was a man in the king's service by the name of Haman who absolutely hated Mordecai. And he decided that he was not only going to take his hatred out on Mordecai, but in fact he was going to seek to exterminate all the Jews Totally, the whole Jewish community, not realizing, of course, at this time that Esther, in fact, was also a Jew. Now, when Haman's intentions became known, Mordecai then sent word to Queen Esther and asked her to tell the king of Haman's plans, even pointing out to the king that she herself was a Jew. Now, we have to understand at this point, this was a very dangerous thing for Esther to do on a variety of different levels, but she decided to go ahead and do it. So she approaches the king, and after he gave her permission, Esther holds a series of banquets just for the king and for Haman. And after she had sufficiently buttered up the king, then she goes ahead and she, she spills the beans. She tells the king all about Haman's plans, and that if he was successful, that even she would lose her life. Well, at that, hearing this, the king is absolutely enraged. He orders that Haman be immediately executed. And he is, ironically, on the same gallows that Haman had built for Mordecai. And Mordecai, well, he is raised up within the kingdom. He's given a position of authority. And the Jews are saved. That's the Cliff Notes version of the story. And if you haven't had a chance to read that story lately, I really encourage you, maybe even this afternoon, find a quiet spot in the house or maybe outside. It's going to be pretty nice today. Read those 10 short chapters of Esther. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. But here's the question. How was Esther able to do what she did? How was she able to risk absolutely everything? She was risking her position. She was risking her safety. She was even risking her very life. How was she able to do that, to rise up and to become more than a queen, 
to in fact become the avenue through which God would rescue His people? Well, the answer to that question is found in that text I read earlier from Isaiah chapter 40. And by the way, that's a text that every single Jew would know inside and out. So how was Esther able to rise up to become more than what she was? How are you and I able to rise up so that we too can become more than what we are, so that we also can be used by God to further His kingdom purposes? Well, just like Esther, we need to know who our God is. That's the point of this text. Right? That's the point of every single verse that leads up to verse 31. It is a reminder. It is a grand declaration of the greatness of our God. Right? Even as it's right there in verse 9, right at the start, behold your God. And who is this God? Well, there's certainly a few things we should note. Number one, first of all, He's a God who is absolutely incomparable in power and might. He's the God who created absolutely everything. Right as we read, He's the God who measured the waters in the hollow of His hand, who marked off the heavens with a span, who enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure. He's the God who sits above the circle of the earth, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain, He's the one who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. He's the one who declares, to whom will you compare me? There's no one. He is absolutely incomparable with respect to His power and His might. That's the first thing. But secondly as well, in addition to that, this God is immeasurable in wisdom and understanding. Right? He's the God who knows absolutely everything. Right? Even as verse 14 questions, who taught Him the path of justice? Who taught Him knowledge and showed Him the way of understanding? The answer obviously is implicit. No one did. No one could teach Him anything. No one has more wisdom and understanding than God. The bottom line is, there is no one like God. The everlasting God as our text labels Him. And thirdly, on top of everything else, He's also a God who is inexhaustible in love and care for His people. He's a God, we're told, who tends His flock like a shepherd. Right, that He gathers the lambs in His arms and He carries them close to His bosom. He gently leads those who are with young. Esther knew this God. The only true God. And that is exactly why she could rise up, placing her hope and her trust completely in God. Knowing, by the way, that whatever happened to her, that whatever might happen to her, that God's purposes, His kingdom plan would continue to prevail. That's the truth. That our gems were encouraged to latch on to this season. That's the truth that all of us are encouraged to latch on to. Right? So that when we place our, our, our hope and our trust firmly and confidently in this great and awesome and loving God, then we too will be empowered to rise up in so many ways to become more than what we are so that we too will be used by God to further His kingdom purposes in ways that you and I can't even begin to imagine. Even so, I think honesty demands that we also acknowledge that things don't always go the way they did for Esther. Right? Esther's story ends happily, right? It ends happily. Right? Esther's position is secure as the queen to King Xerxes, and and Mordecai is raised in authority, and the entire Jewish population is saved. It's not always going to be the case. Sometimes the story isn't going to end so happily. And take Stephen, for example, right? The first martyr for Christ. Right? Acts chapter 7 tells us that 
he was really a man after Esther's heart, right? I mean, here was a man who was, who was full of faith. He had hope and trust in God, and, and he was ready and willing to testify about Jesus. It didn't matter the consequences. But for that, Stephen was stoned to death. Right? Not a happy ending, per se. But even though God, even then, God empowered Stephen to endure And he used his death to explode the gospel out of Jerusalem and to eventually take the gospel all throughout the then known world. Right, and the point is simple and yet very significantly this, that when we completely place our trust and our hope in God, this great and awesome and loving God, then we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he will empower us to rise up. And listen closely, no matter what happens to us personally, that His kingdom purposes will continue to go forth and they will continue to prevail. Just as God was then for Esther and His people, so He is and will continue to be for us, His people today. In the name and for the sake of Jesus. That's a lesson worth latching on to. That's a truth that speaks a thousand times louder than anything this world has to offer. In fact, that is the truth that you and I can literally stake our lives on, knowing that as we wait for the Lord, as we place our hope and our trust completely and absolutely in this great and awesome and loving God, as we trust in Jesus, He'll renew our strength. He'll allow us to to soar as on wings like eagles, to run and not grow weary, to walk and not be faint. He will empower us to rise up for Him for His glory, and for the goal of His kingdom. Would you pray with me? God, thanks for the opportunity this morning to to focus our attention just for a little while on the theme that, that our gems had the opportunity to think about throughout their season, to rise up, to understand that just as you were for Esther, you will be for your people today by grace through faith in Jesus the Messiah. That we can know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. You are the same God. And you continue to fight our battles today. This is who you are. And you will empower us as we hope, as we trust in you, you will empower us to become more, so much more, than what we are, that you will use us to further your kingdom purposes in ways that that we can't even imagine. You just call us to, to wait, to trust, to hope in Jesus. Help us to do that with all that we are, and that you will renew our strength, that you will empower us, and that we will experience mounting up with wings like eagles, running and not growing weary, walking and not becoming faint for your glory, for the goal of your kingdom. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a time to respond with all of our heart to this Lord, the great God. So let us stand to to the Lord and let's sing together. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong delay. Are the everlasting God. 
Once again, uh, with song, a couple of verses of for a thousand tongues to sing right before that uh, reminder. Number one, when we do make our way out, there's an opportunity to give, and that offering this morning is for our Gems Club uh, here at Grafskop Church. And number two, reminder that after we sing these couple of verses, just go ahead and have a seat. And then we've got a couple of council members coming up to lead us through that, that voting for new council members. But before all of that happens, God gives to us his parting blessing. Receive that blessing now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and grant you his peace now and always. Amen. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. This is...